So as you are aware, we have kept our farm um, absolutely chemical free. So we have kept it organic, if that's what the word is. And in that, what we have seen is we have tried to use as much of the natural, traditional way of enhancing our soil. You will always hear farmers use a letter called N, P and K. A synonym that goes very much with farming, which is nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus. Um, K stands for uh, potassium. So the NPK, if you take care of your NPK on the soil, you get a better growth. And because of this, a lot of people use chemicals and we are away from that. But the problem with our soil is multifold. Our first thing is we had given uh, our soil for soil testing and the results haven't come. And because of that, we are shooting in the dark. So we are seeing phosphorus deficiency, potassium deficiency, which is prevalent in the other crops that we have uh, done. And we are trying to overcome this. At the same time, the other problem that we have noticed is a part of a land was used as a clin, as a big brick clin. And in that, the top surface of the soil was completely destroyed because of the heat of the clin. And post that, our land maintenance did not happen. Nobody cultivated anything on this land. It's been chemical free, but it's, it was full of weeds. It had not been cultivated. So the soil conditions is not very much conducive for great plantation. And now that we have started, uh, full-on farming, we are having teething problems. So we have done quite a few things. What have we done? So in this season, while we are planting rice, we got cow dung compost and uh, we planted dentures a month before our planting. We had uh, almost six to seven tons of uh, uh, composted organic manure. It's this farmyard manure, as we call it. And uh, we grew dencha. Uh, dencha is a leguminous plant which fixes nitrogen. It fixes atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. And at the end of uh, 35 to 40 days, we plowed the plant back into the field uh, so that it slowly decomposes and releases uh, nitrogen uh, into the soil. So this is the nitrogen supplement which was taken care of. So for phosphorus, um, one of my friend uh, Praveen, who is in Atul, he suggested that we use Maiza. He sent these products to me and we are no long, we are not being paid by them, let me just tell you. It's by a company called Atul, who has come up with this Maiza, which is a micro, micro biofertilizer. And this is basically a fungi. The term mycorrhiza, myco means fungi and rhiza means root. So this is a fungi which is in a symbiotic relationship with the plant. So in a plant root, the primary root does not do the absorption nor the secondary root. It's the tertiary roots or the new roots and the root hairs which are capable of absorbing the nutrition. So the mycorrhizal fungi go and become a host they attach themselves to the root uh, surface and they grow into the root. This fungi will get a host in our rice paddy roots. While it gets the host, it will synthesize the various uh, nutrients from the soil to the roots which will help the growth of the rice plant. For one acre, you need four kgs of this, which is what the bag is. This is what my friend said. And this is um, hardly anything. This is like um, 800 rupees. And um, what's inside is fantastic. It's, it's basically fungi and it's organic. Let me brief you the areas in which the mycorrhizal fungi uh, acts with, along with the root and what are the things that it enables in the soil. The root system's growth. The mycorrhizal fungi, it uh, supports faster establishment of the plant. The hyphae or the fibers of the mycorrhiza, they access water and uh, nutrients beyond the root zone. 
and deliver them to the plant's vascular network. It increases the absorption area by as much as 50 times. It increases the overall root biomass. Nutrient efficiency. Mycorrhizal hyphae absorb and actively deliver nutrients directly to the roots. Improves utilization of soil nutrients including nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and micronutrients. Water absorption. Mycorrhizal hyphae absorb and transport the soil moisture from beyond the root zone to the plant roots. The mycorrhizal symbiosis increases the plant's effective water utilization capability. This improves the tolerance of the plant towards stress and greater resistance to drought. This we have applied uh, by broadcasting method. We mixed it with uh, uh, compost and then we have uh, spread it in the field. We have used 4 kg per acre, that is the recommended dosage. And this is a one-time application that can be done. In case of uh, one uh, single harvest crop, one-time application is good enough. For the fruit plants which are perennial in nature, twice can be applied in a year, just before uh, uh, fruiting. And for longer duration crops, twice a year is recommended. But if you have a standing crop in your field constantly, and if you're not allowing the field to be exposed to the sun, then this becomes a permanent resident in the soil along with the root because it needs a live plant tissue, a plant root to be alive. So if you are going to have constant continuous standing crops in your field, then one time application is good enough and it keeps multiplying itself and it, it thrives. But in case if you are removing a crop, leaving it barren for a couple of months and then going for a new crop, then a fresh application would be needed. So we are excited to see what the results will be. We have given um, uh, a packet to the neighbor also and uh, the neighbor has divided his plot into two and uh, in one plot he has not applied the mycorrhiza, in another he has applied mycorrhiza. And uh, as per the recommendation, as per what uh, my friend has told me, in 8 to 12 weeks it should show visible difference in what it, it is capable of doing to the plant. Let's see.